Hello, this video talks about various CMOS differential amplifier topologies. Differential amplifier is probably the most used analog subblock. A typical differential amplifier contains a differential input stage, a load stage, and in most cases a bias stage. Output is taken across load stage. Input stage is also known as transconductance stage because it converts the input differential voltage into differential current. Load stage converts this current back into the voltage. Input pair determines most of the important properties of the diffamp. These include gain, bandwidth, input common mode range, noise and mismatch. Load stage defines gain, bandwidth, output common mode range and supply rejection properties. Bias stage defines current consumption, input common mode range, common mode rejection and slew rate. We can classify differential amplifier in many ways. For example, if it has fully differential or single ended output, low gain or high gain amplifier, whether input stage is NMOS or PMOS and so on. In this video, we'll look at various diffamp topologies without going too much into the design details. In this video, we'll use NDIF amplifier to explain the topologies. But you can easily derive the PDIF topology. In most of the cases, it is input common mode range requirement which determines which one to use. But in certain low noise, low bandwidth applications, using PMOS would be preferred because of its low flicker noise. Or in certain high speed application, using NMOS would be preferred because of its high GM. With this in mind, let's now look at topologies. The first topology is diode connected load topology. Gain of an amplifier is transconductance provided by the input stage multiplied by the resistance offered by load stage. Since resistance offered by diode connected PMOS transistor is simply 1 over its transconductance, the gain of this stage is simply GMN over GMP. Notice the inverted polarity of diffamp output in the sense that if the positive input is taken in the left branch, then positive output is taken in the right branch. In order to estimate the value of this gain, notice that the input transistor and load transistor carry the same current. And hence their transconduction should be of the same order. If we divide the numerator and denominator of this equation by the current carried by these transistors, then we can express gain in terms of GM over IDs of these transistors. In a typical design, we try to maximize the GM of the input transistor and minimize the GM of the output transistor. For a given current, the maximum GM is offered by sub-threshold region where GM over ID is roughly 25. We can minimize the GM by keeping the load transistors into strong inversion. And for a reasonable design, it can be as low as 5. So we can expect a gain of the order of 5 from this amplifier. And in dBs, values of this gain is 14 dB. Now since this gain value is not too high, the diffamp with diode connected load makes low gain amplifier topology. But at the same time, this amplifier provides high bandwidth. In fact, this gain bandwidth trade-off is one of the most well-known trade-offs in amplifier design. Because of the low gain and high bandwidth, this amplifier topology is widely used as the first stage of multi-stage amplifiers and comparators. The low gain property of this amplifier is especially well suited for the auto zero offset cancellation at the output. But if this gain is too low, then there are a couple of ways to increase the gain a bit. One of the ways to increase the gain is to connect current sources in parallel with diode connected load. If the amplifier is biased at a current ISS, then in order to work properly, these current sources must be less than half of this current. In absence of these additional current sources, the load device would carry almost half of the bias current. When these current sources are added, the current carried by this diode connected transistor reduces and hence their GM also reduces. This reduced GM in turn increases the gain. For example, if without changing the size, the current in this transistor is reduced to one fourth of the original value, then transconductance becomes half and gain doubles. 
these additional current sources can be implemented using additional PMOS devices. Additional biasing stage would also be required to define this node. In practice, the matching between different current sources and transfer stages defines the upper limit on this current. We can expect 5 to 10 dB of gain increase from this technique. In some application, the additional biasing can be undesirable. The next technique can get around this problem. This technique uses cross couple transistor P3 and P4 in parallel with P1 and P2 to increase the transistor gain. Cross couple pair forms a positive feedback circuit. If the transconductance of diode connected transistor is GMPD and cross couple transistors is GMPC, then total transconductance of this state is GMPD minus GMPC. An amplifier gain becomes input transconductance over this value. So in principle we can make this value as small as we wish and make gain as large but in practice there is a danger. If the transconductance of cross coupled transistor becomes larger than diode connected transistor then this circuit stops to behave as an amplifier and behaves as a latch. So design need to make sure that this never happens. Ultimately matching between the cross coupled transistor and diode transistor dictates how small we can make this term. But it is reasonable to expect 5 to 10 times gain increase from this technique. Next, we will consider differential amplifier with passive loads. Gain of this topology is input GM into R out, where R out is parallel combination of passive resistor and resistance of input transistor. We ignore the R out and terms in previous topologies because it is many orders of magnitude larger than the transconductance of diode connected transistors and hence can be ignored. Differential amplifier with passive loads are frequently used in high speed circuits because parasitic associated with resistors are much smaller than that associated with transistors. Also for a temperature independent current bias, this circuit provides a very well defined output swing. But this well defined output swing also becomes a limitation of this topology. In this topology, gain and output swings are very tightly coupled to each other because both depend on the output resistor and the current. For example, if we want to increase the gain by increasing the resistor, then we have to reduce the current to achieve a reasonable output swing. By the same logic, if we are increasing the current, for example to increase the speed, we have to keep the resistor reasonably low to have a good swing. What this means is we cannot choose high bias current and high output resistor at the same time. Our next topology gets around this problem. In this topology, resistors are not connected to the supply but to the common gate node of PMOS transistors. This common gate node acts as a small signal ground and hence the small signal gain is same as previous topology. In this topology, only differential current flows to the resistors and not the common mode bias current and hence we can choose the bias current and the resistor values independently. So if high value resistors are available, we can design moderately high gain amplifier. A sample calculation here made for 2 microampere of bias current and 1 mega ohms of resistor shows a gain of around 25. Bear in mind that a resistor of the order of 1 mega ohm may require considerably large area. Now let's turn our attention to high gain amplifier topologies. The most common way to achieve high gain amplifier is to connect transistor acting as current sources as load devices. R out in this case is the parallel combination of small signal output resistance of input device and the load device. This R out can be as high as several mega ohms or maybe tens of mega ohms. So gains ranging from several tens to several hundreds can be achieved. But these amplifiers suffer from poorly defined output common mode voltages which was not the case in the previously discussed amplifiers. To appreciate this problem. Notice that we have connected two current sources in series. Recall from your network analysis class that doing this is prohibited. Even if we assume that the current sources connected in series are exactly equal, the node voltage in the middle is not well defined. To get around this problem, all such high gain amplifiers use what is known as common mode feedback circuit. The idea behind common mode feedback is to adjust one of the two current sources in such a way to ensure a well defined common mode output voltage. It is done by sensing the output voltages usually using the resistors and then regulating the common mode using a negative feedback circuit. 
All the amplifier topologies discussed so far are fully differential amplifiers. Now let's turn our attention to single ended amplifier topologies. Probably the best known single ended differential amplifier topology is one with current mirror load. Gain of this amplifier topology is same as the previously discussed fully differential topology. This may seem surprising at first because we are using only one side of the output. So we should probably expect half as much the gain. But notice that the other half also contributes in the gain by changing the gate voltage Vm which was not the case in the previous topology where the gate voltage was always fixed. But this also means that this topology have additional pole because of this mirror node Vm which was not the case with fully differential topology. Also note that even if V out is still poorly defined, the single ended topologies do not need explicit common mode feedback. This is because single ended amplifiers are usually embedded inside a negative feedback system which define the output. Next we will discuss techniques to increase the gain even further. The most logical way to increase the gain is to increase the effective output resistance by cascading the load stage and the input stage. Notice that we need to cascode both input and load stage because the effective output resistance is parallel combination of these two stages. The resulting amplifier topology is called telescopic amplifiers. The effective R out can be in hundreds of mega ohms or even in giga ohms and the resulting gain can be in hundreds or in thousands. The most obvious disadvantage is severely limited input and output common mode range. We can obviously use wide swing cascode as a load to improve the situation somewhat. But it can still be very challenging and limiting to design telescopic defamps especially for the lower supply voltages. To make things better, we turn to what is known as folded cascode topologies. To understand the concept of folded cascode, recall that cascode topology refers to common gate transistors on the top of common source transistor. In conventional cascode, both the transistors are of same type, both NMOS or both PMOS. But it is not mandatory for cascode to work. We can in fact use NMOS for common source stage and PMOS for common gate stage. Also we need to put a current source on the top of common gate stage to bias it. Although functionally the folded cascode is same as conventional cascode but there are some differences. Output resistance offered by folded cascode stage is gain of cascode transistor multiplied by parallel combination of output resistance of current source and the input transistor. Also folded cascode topology requires larger bias current because it requires additional bias current to bias the cascode transistor. Also the cascode node now has more capacitance associated with it because of the more transistor connected to this node. So if we replace the input stage cascode in telescopic amplifier by folded cascode we get something like this. Here input diff pair and the PMOS transistors are part of folded cascode. And the current mirror load is realized using wide swing cascode topology. Notice that unlike telescopic amplifier, we can bias input diff pair and the output stage at different currents. This can be a good thing because it gives additional degree of freedom in the design. Keep in mind that both telescopic and folded cascode different topologies can also be used to implement fully differential amplifiers. Folded cascode topology significantly improves the input common mode range over telescopic amplifier. In fact, for n diff input stage, the inputs can be as high as the supply rail or even a slightly higher. But on the lower side, the ICMR is still limited by VGS of input stage and VDSAT of tail current. If rail to rail input common mode is required, then we can turn to, well, rail to rail defam topologies. The idea behind rail to rail defam topologies is to use both NMOS and PMOS as input diff pair. When input is too low or near the ground rail, the NMOS diff pair is off and PMOS diff pair is on. And when the input is near the supply rail, the PMOS is off and NMOS diff pair is on. In the middle of the range, both N diff and P diffs are on. There are many different ways ranging from very simple to very complex to combine the output of these two diff pairs. But in this video, we'll leave rail to rail defam topologies at this. We will now discuss a few options to implement the tail current. For most of the defam circuit, a simple current mirror serves the purpose for the tail currents. 
To improve the performance, we can replace the simple current mirror by cascode current mirror. This of course comes at the cost of slightly reduced ICMR. On the other extreme, the tail current is replaced by simple passive register. This is regularly done for the amplifiers and comparator used during chip startup because at that time reliable current biases may not be available. In certain application, input diff pair is source degenerated to improve the linearity. If implemented like this, the drop across register reduces the ICMR. An alternate implementation looks like this. Here, tail current source is split into two. So far in this video, we have discussed amplifier topologies which are biased by tail current and where input is applied at the gate terminal of input diff pair. As last example, we'll look at an amplifier topology which differs from other topologies discussed so far in both these aspects. In this topology, the inputs are applied at the source terminal of input diff pair. Now, inputs are no longer high impedance nodes and hence the inputs now need to have some current driving capabilities. I have recently used this topology to compare two supply voltages. Since supply voltages are inherently low impedance and high drive nodes, they have no problem driving these inputs. And with this, we come to the end of this video. Hopefully, this overview of one state CMOS DFM topologies was useful to you. So share your comments below and thanks for watching.